What's good, yo? It's your boy Spiritual Neasy, back with another video brought to you by the Holy Spirit, man. Now in today's video, I'm going to talk about seven biblical ways to discern God's voice versus Satan's voice, right? How to know if it's God talking to you or if it's the devil, if it's Satan talking to you, whispering in your ear, trying to get you to influence and do the ways of him and follow after him, which is going to lead to death and destruction, right? So remember, you can only hear God's voice if you're actively seeking God. So the more that you follow after God, the louder his voice is going to get and the more you'll be able to recognize that it's him talking to you and not the devil. And the easier it'll be to follow after him, right? And see, God, he's so loving that he can talk to you even if you're living in sin, even if you're not following after him, because he might be trying to call you and you better pick up that call, right? But see, when you're not following after God, you're following after your flesh, your stomach is your God. It's going to be harder to hear his voice and you're going to question yourself. You're going to be like, is that God or the devil? Like, it's going to be harder to recognize and discern the voices, and it's going to be harder to follow after and take heed to God's instruction, right? So the first way to know that God is talking to you is number one, he is quiet, right? But see the devil, he's going to be loud. So the reason why God is quiet is because God is invincible. God is spirit. Like we read in the book of John chapter four, verse 24 says, God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth, right? So see, God, he's going to tell you to do what's morally right. He's going to talk to your spirit. So that's why you have to be in a place where there's quietness so that you can feel God talking to you, right? God can talk to you through many different ways, right? He could give you signs throughout the day. He could talk to you through different people. He could talk to you through different events in your day right? But you got to really just pay attention. And the more that you follow after God, the more that your discernment is going to increase and you'll know it's God talking to you, right? But see the devil, he's real loud in your ear. He's trying to tell you to follow after your flesh. The reason why the devil's voice can be louder is because see the devil works through our flesh because our flesh is evil and sinful naturally. So our flesh naturally, if we don't take heed to God's word, we're going to be following after the devil. But see, we have to humble ourselves and really, you know, get in our quiet, in our prayer room and, 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 and speak to God, you know, dedicate that time to spend with God so that we can hear him because you can only hear him through your spirit, through your heart. God is going to encourage you to do what's morally right. The devil is going to encourage you to do what is selfish. OK, so see Satan, he's loud and he, he's going to tell you, you know, do what your flesh wants to do, do what you feel like doing. Right. Satan doesn't want you to be aware of the spiritual, of the unseen world. No, he doesn't want you. See, God, he wants you to be aware of the unseen world. Don't be so focused and so, you know, overstimulated about your senses in this physical world and be so focused on what you feel like in the, in the physical realm. But take heed to what's going on in the spiritual realm. A lot of people, they don't even understand or even care that there's demons latching onto them that there's angels and demons and demonic spirits. We, we battle against spirits. We don't battle against, you know, people, right? So there's literally spirits that we cannot see that's, you know, operating inside of people. Same thing with, you know, good spirits, clean spirits, right? So, you know, don't let the, the worldly things, don't let the things of this world blind your eyes in the spiritual realm so that you're unaware of what's really going on, right, in the unseen world, okay? Because everything that you see on this physical realm is going to expire. It's all temporary. Everything in the unseen world is going to last forever. Okay. So the second way to know God's voice from the devil's voice is God is going to give you pure and productive thoughts. But the devil is going to give you demonic and lustful thoughts. Right. So I know for me personally, you know, I've been getting tempted heavily, man, heavily spiritual warfare with lust. Okay. And, you know, God Sometimes he will give me, you know, those pure productive thoughts. And that's why it's important to pray without ceasing, you know, rebuke the devil and, and, and ask that God purify your mind and your heart. Because the Bible says in the book of Matthew that it is through our heart that evil thoughts come out of, right? Thoughts of fornication, uh, adultery, theft, murder, right? All of these things that's wicked upon God, it comes from our heart and then it goes to our mind. The devil can plant evil thoughts in your mind. The devil's going to try to remind you of your past, right? But see, when the devil tries to remind you of your evil past, of who you used to be, remind him of his future, right? Because the devil is destined to be in hell. Hell is going to be his home, okay? So don't get discouraged when he tries to plant those evil thoughts in your head. Just understand the authority that God has given you, 
Like he said in the book of 10, uh, Luke chapter 10, verse 19, he gives us the authority to step on Satan. So remember that authority that you have and don't let the devil take it away from you. OK. And so in Proverbs chapter 15, verse 26, it says the thoughts of the wicked are an abomination to the Lord, but the words of the pure are pleasant words. OK, so if it's an abomination to the Lord, that's how you know God would not give you those evil thoughts. When you start to dwell on the thoughts of, you know, having sex outside of marriage, um, adultery, masturbating, getting high, getting drunk, don't think that that's God talking to you. That's the devil trying to whisper in your ear to get you to do those things because he knows that through those actions, he's going to drift you away. He's going to pull you away from God, okay? Because all of those things are an abomination to the Lord. So the thoughts of those things are also an abomination to the Most High God, okay? So the third way to discern God's voice from the devil's voice is that God promotes patience. God encourage you, encourages you to stay patient, but see the devil, he's going to rush you, right? So a uh, quick testimony. Me and my brother, we were recently apartment shopping, right? And, you know, there would be times in the journey that I would just feel like I just want to hurry up and get a place because we're so fed up with our current place. And, you know, God, I feel like God would always try to tell me to, like, just be patient, like, let his timing prevail, let God's will prevail. And, you know, if it's our time to move out now or six months from now, just let it be in God's timing. So you have to learn how to surrender your situation to God, whatever it is. Forget about your will, but let God's will be done because he knows the perfect timing for you. He knows the best timing for you, right? So just trust the Lord. And also remember that in Galatians chapter 5, verse 22, it is specifically that patience is one of the fruits of the Spirit. It says, but the Spirit produces the fruit of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law that says these things are wrong, right? So see, God is going to give you, he's going to promote patience. He wants you to be patient and not to rush, okay? Because you're going to rush yourself into a situation that you can't get yourself out of. But if you just stay patient and let God work, then everything will come to plan and in his divine timing, okay? And so... Yeah, Satan, he's going to try to rush you. He's going to make you try to think that, you know, everything has to happen today. You have to get rich today. You have to get rich overnight. You have to be a millionaire, you know, this year when that, that, that might not be God's plan for you. That might not be God's timing for you. God's timing is the best timing. So, you know, don't get so caught up in what you want to happen at this certain time. You know, pray to God and ask God to guide you and build you to become the person that can handle, you know, all that success that you're praying for. Okay. So the fourth way to discern God's voice from the devil's voice is God is going to tell you the truth. OK, but Satan, he lies to you. Right. So God, he gives us the spirit of truth through Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit. OK, but see the devil, he's a liar. He's been a liar from the beginning. OK, John chapter eight, verse 44. Jesus said, you belong to your father, the devil, and you want to do what he wants. He was a murderer from the beginning and was against the truth because there is no truth in him. Then it says, when he tells a lie, he shows what he really is like because he is a liar and the father of lies. So Satan is literally the father of lies. So, you know, whenever you start to have those, uh, those demonic, those lustful fantasies, if you're anything like me, I know that the devil is lying to me. You know, when I, when I have thoughts of like having a threesome or an orgy or like, you know, just imaginations of like, corn hub websites and just videos that I used to watch in the past and just like Satan will try to give you a false reality of what of what life really is and what will really happen right he'll try to lie to you and tell you oh yeah you can get that girl you could smash that girl you could lay down with that woman with that man you could get you could do that you could fornicate and and there won't be no consequences oh that's one of his biggest lies you can go against God you can sin against God and there won't be no consequences y'all don't listen to that because I've been there and I've felt the consequences, okay? So, but God, he's going to tell you the truth, okay? God says in 1 Corinthians that this is the only sin you do against your own body, which is lust. God tells you the truth. Look in the New Old Testament. All the times that the people idolized other gods and went against God and lived how they wanted to live, look how God punished them, okay? God was going crazy in the Old Testament, right? He was really showing his wrath. He was really showing how serious, you know, he takes sin. Okay? And what makes you think that his mind, that his perspective on sin has changed, right? 
So all glory be to Jesus Christ so that we don't have to suffer the way that the people did in the Old Testament. But you got to make sure that you're following after Jesus Christ. Okay. So the fifth way to discern God's voice from Satan's voice is that God says, be strong and courageous. But the devil says, be scared. Right. So the devil, he's going to give you thoughts and he's going to make you uh, he's going to fill you up with fear. He's going to attempt to give you to give you fearful thoughts and to make you scared to take that risk or make you scared to, you know, do what you got to do on a daily basis or to make you scared to follow after God, to lose friends, to be persecuted. Right. Jesus said that this is going to happen to us anyway. But blessed are those that are persecuted for his sake, okay? because the kingdom of heaven is theirs. Right. So would you rather be persecuted and talk bad about and insulted and lose friends and lose this world, but make it into the kingdom of heaven and be right with your creator, your father in heaven? Or would you rather, you know, do what you want to do and then, you know, get these temporary things of the world, but you're not even right with the most high God. You're not even right with your father in heaven, your creator. Okay. So Joshua chapter one, verse nine. Remember that I commanded you to be strong and brave. Don't be afraid because the Lord, your God will be with you everywhere you go. Okay. So that's the Lord talking, right? So the Lord commands us to be strong and courageous because he is with us, that he will never leave and forsake us. Okay. The closer and closer you get to God, the more and more his shield, his protection is over you. But the, see, the devil doesn't want you to know that. The devil wants you to feel like you're alone. The devil wants you to feel, um, you know, anxious and scared and filled with fear so that you act out of that fear and you drift yourself away from God or you do something that could damage yourself out of fear. Okay? Or you miss out on an opportunity that God is telling you to go on, but because the devil has, has you scared, you're not ready, you're, you, you're, you don't go on it, right? So, you know, always, you know, take heed and remember that God wants you to be strong and courageous. The devil wants you to be scared, right? And see, and also in the book of Isaiah, chapter 41, verse 10. So do not worry because I am with you. Don't be afraid because I am your God. Then the Lord says, I will make you strong and will help you. I will support you with my right hand that saves you. Okay. So God tells us plenty of times that he is with you and to not be scared. Do not let the devil fill you with fear because God is walking with you. The devil wants you to think that you're alone, but God wants you to know that you're never alone and that he's always with you. Okay. And that he will uphold you with his right hand and save you and deliver you from the hands of the devil. Okay. So the sixth way to discern God's voice from Satan's voice is God says, do not worry, but Satan says he fills you with anxiety, okay? So Satan is going to make you feel anxious. Satan is going to make you worry about, you know, if you're going to get that job or get that car or get that house or get that relationship, whatever it is, get that uh, promotion. Satan is going to make you worry about, you know, just little things that could just throw you off your game, throw you off your focus, and, you know, throw you off your focus on God, which is important because we got to stay focused in the spiritual realm so that we don't fall into temptation, right? So Satan, he's going to try to throw you off your focus by filling you with anxiety, making you feel anxious about things that the Lord has already prepared. The Lord has already situated it out, okay? So God wants you to know that he's already worked these things out in your favor, Romans chapter 8. But Satan, he wants you to, you know, be fearful. He wants you to be anxious. He wants you to be confused, right? Because Satan, he gives you the spirit of confusion. God gives you the spirit of reassurance, truth, and love. Okay? So in Philippians chapter 4, verse 6, it says, Do not worry about anything, but pray and ask God for everything you need, always giving thanks. Then it says, And God's peace, which is so great that we cannot understand it, will keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Right? So that's the other way to know that it's God talking to you, is that God will give you peace. Okay, he'll give you peace that surpasses all understanding if you just stay in prayer, you stay close to him, you stay clinged on to God. He will give you that peace, man. I'm telling y'all, bro, there is no peace like the peace that God gives you, okay? And so also, Satan, he's going to make you feel uneasy. He's going to try to make you feel, like I said, anxious, fearful, worried, scared, uneasy. Satan is going to, um, you know, he's going to try to keep you up at night, worried and dwelling on things that is out of your control, or if it is in your control, he's going to try to make you worry about things that the Lord has already figured out. He's already, you know, solved that problem for you. OK, so don't let the devil, don't let the enemy, you know, uh, make you scared. Don't let the enemy taint your spirit through fear okay? because that's one of his biggest tools. And just remember that the Lord is always with you. You're never alone. And any whatever you're worried about, he's already figured it out for you. OK, 
So to wrap up the video, seven ways to discern God's voice versus the devil's voice is number one, God is quiet, Satan is loud. Number two, God promotes pure and productive thoughts, Satan gives you demonic and lustful thoughts. Number three, God promotes patience, Satan rushes you. Number four, God tells you the truth, Satan lies to you. Number five, God says be strong and courageous, Satan says be scared and filled with fear. Number six, God says, do not worry. Satan fills you with anxiety and worry. And number seven, God gives you peace. Satan makes you feel uneasy. Okay. So remember guys, pay attention to what's going on in the spiritual realm. Don't be so focused about what's going on physically, what's going on around you. Don't let your physical senses overstimulate you, but you know, stay focused on the word of God. Stay focused in the spirit, which is staying focused on God. Stay in your prayer room. Stay in your Bible and, and, you know, if you got to fast, okay, remember to fast because that diminishes your flesh, grows the spirit, okay? So if you made it this far in the video, comment down below. I love God. Till next time, it's been your boy Neezy. I love y'all, man. I'm out, bro. Peace.